Hi, it's Mrs. C here. Good afternoon. Just wanted to take a minute and go over our week three, cycle three, uh, new grammar that we did today in class. So for those of you parents that weren't in there, you know what we did. <laughs> so the first thing we did was our geography as usual. We switched it up a little bit today and we drew pictures in our states just to kind of help us identify. So for example, in Columbia, South Carolina, we drew hearts. For Charleston, we drew smiley face. Um, different things like that just to kind of give them a little something to look at besides tracing or doing a dot. We um, identified all of them by the capital, then we identified all of them by the state, went back and forth. So hopefully they should be getting pretty good at saying the capital with the state or the state and the capital back and forth. Uh, the next thing we did is we did Latin, and we had a lot of Latin words this week. We got lucky last week and only had three, and so this week we had to make them up. So we did prepositions this week, and I made um, these papers. So we have all of our Latin in order over here, and then these were all mixed up. And as we went through, they just matched them to the correct ones. Um, and I had multiple versions of this, so we switched with the partner um, a few times, and it was different every time. Uh, the Latin was all the same, but the words on the other side were different, so they had to match each time. And just went through and matched all of those. Um, I will say them for you in case you are confused on how to say them and don't have the CD or the app. So it's hic hoc, so like coke, hoke, um, ipso ipsum, kiwi, like a kiwi kind of, but a kiwi, quod, not quad, quod, im, and alum, so like you're gonna say illuminate, but alum, all right? So there's your Latin for this week. Then the next thing we did was history, so tell me about the Boston Tea Party. In 1773, colonists dressed as Mohawk stumped tea from the British East India Company into the Boston Harbor. And this song didn't really have any music to it, it was just kind of like a taunting, sing-songy voice. So to do something a little different with that, um, I drew pictures for each of the words and tried to pretty much get the whole sentence in picture. So I had it written up and then I would race a couple words and see if we can remember the words there. So for colonists, I drew a tricorn hat, um, which is the hat that they wore um, that kind of had the three corners on it. For dressed, I drew, drew a dress. And then mohawks, I drew a profile with a guy with a mohawk. And then I drew an arrow, um, just kind of like going like this, dumping for dumped. Um, and then a tea bag for tea. From the British, I drew the Union Jack flag. I attempted to draw the Union Jack flag. Let's be honest, it didn't really look that great, but they knew what I meant. <laughs> and then for the East India Company, I drew a North, South, East, West compass circled east on it. And then India, uh, the shape of India, and then just CO period for company. Into we did a star and MA for Massachusetts since Boston is the capital of Massachusetts. And then I drew just some land with some water next to it for harbor. So just went through and replaced those in C and they did really well getting that one pretty quickly, which was great. Uh, then we moved on to science. So science we have, what are the three types of muscle? So the three kinds of muscle are, stand up for this. We yeah, have skeletal, so we just kind of stood like you would see a skeleton in a museum. Skeletal. And then we have smooth, so just rub your arm smooth. And then cardiac, your heart muscles. Uh, after that, we did a past participle, which was our English. And we did this to the tune of London Bridge. And I had the kids sit and we passed a ball around. So we did it slowly. And then it did, we did it more quickly. But the tune goes... A past participle is a verb plus ed used as an adjective or a verb. So we just went around and passed the ball around as we said that. And um, I made sure the kids were singing or we didn't get to pass the ball because I mean like that. Huh. Um, then we did our timeline. So timeline starts off with Hinduism in India. So we just point to our forehead like the bindi dot for India. So Hinduism in India. Phoenicians in the alphabet. We signed a... B and C, Phoenicians in the alphabet. Olmecs, we did an O. Of Mesoamerica, we kind of went around like we're doing the earth and then the middle, so Mesoamerica. Um, Israelite exodus, like you're opening a door and exiting. And then desert wandering, so it was so hot in the desert. Israelite conquest, so we acted like we were fighting. And judges, we pound like you're pounding your gavel. 
So Israelite conquest and judges. And then Greek dark ages. We cover our eyes because it was dark. And Israel's united kingdom. We brought our hands up and around and interlocked our thumb and pointers together. So they were united. And I think that's all for New Grammar. For our art, we did drawing upside down. And if you're like me, you were really confused why kids needed to draw upside down because it just seems kind of pointless. But what I learned is that your brain sees a whole image. So, for example, you see this jar and your brain sees the whole thing together because it's used to seeing it like this and it just sees jar and it says jar. However, if you were to turn it upside down, not really, it's kind of weird what it looks like. So you're having to see the individual pieces of it together to put it into your brain to think, okay, that's a jar because it's upside down. So when we draw upside down, it makes our brain break things down into our oils, the individual pieces that put our picture together rather than seeing one whole big picture and trying to draw the different parts of it. So we did an eagle this week. The kids did amazing at this. I was so proud of them. So I'll show it to you right side up. So this is the eagle that we drew, but we drew it upside down. And the kids did a really great job with it. It was really fun to see them trying to figure out what we were drawing. I think some of them got it figured out when we got the beak done, but it took uh, other ones a, a little bit longer. So that was really great. For science, we did fingerprints. And we used um, just lead from a pencil and a piece of tape and we're able to do our fingerprints. So maybe you guys want to do your fingerprints for your family. That'd be really fun. And I hypothesize that family's fingerprints are going to be um, similar in what type of fingerprint they have. If it's an arch or a whirl or a loop, I'm going to hypothesize that everyone's fingerprints in a family will be the same type. So let me know if my hypothesis is correct. It was really fun, and I tried to stress to the kids how amazing it was that we each have 10 different fingerprints, and in our room we had 12 people, and that was just 120 fingerprints just in that room, and that God has created how many millions of fingerprints throughout time, and they're all different, and that is just so amazing to me. We also learned that... Um, babies are when they are five months before they're born have fingerprints that's when they're developed so you have fingerprints from the moment you come into this world and they are yours forever they never change so I think that's really amazing Um just maybe talk to your kids about that and how awesome it is that you know God has created each one of us different and that that's so wonderful so I'm so thankful for all of my parent helpers I really appreciate you guys stepping in for me today when I had to leave the room <laughs> and take care of a situation so I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you next Tuesday thanks guys